Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Just one week late for St. Patrick's Day. I turned the green lights on. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, man, it's been a while since I used the colored lights for my uh, setup. And then I'm like, well, green. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day was like a week ago. But sure, that's good enough. We could do that. Hi, King Shadow. You're always the first person in here, King Shadow. Starting to question whether or not you're a real human, King Shadow. Super! Happy birthday. It's not my birthday, but uh, it's a month from now. So you might have thought it was uh, March 24th. It's actually April 24th, so you're giving me a preemptive birthday. But still, I appreciate that. You remembered the number, and that's all that matters. If you can remember one number in my birthday, I'm fine. You know? Say so you're good. Happy birth! I love how everyone's just calling me happy birthday now. It's just like, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> the 24th of every month is my birthday. We'll just go with that. It's fine. <laughs> Chapter 1111. Yes. Oh, a lot of crazy stuff in this chapter to go over. I should probably pull the chapter up, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All hail the king of tech. I am not the king of tech. I actually do not know a lot about technology. Do not come to me with a technology question. I will not be able to answer it properly. I mean, I could just make shit up, but, you know. Um, yeah. So, by, oh, by the way, also, my lips are chapped to holy hell right now, like, really bad. Like, yesterday it got so bad, like, they started to bleed at certain points. So I'm just like my lips are just covered in in like Vaseline right now. So make that make that to whatever you will. It's very glossy and shiny, but uh, that's that's the reason why because I hate the winter. Technically, it's not winter anymore. Technically, I guess it is spring now. But uh, yeah, not fun. Do you remember when Zoro wanted to ask Vegapunk something in early Egghead? Yeah, no, I don't think that was that was one of those things. I think in translation that came out like. Zoro had something very specific to say to, to Vegapunk. Like, he had a specific question he wanted answered. And I don't think it was that. I think it was more of just like, you know, hey, you know, I, I have something to say to your leader. I want to meet your boss. or something. I don't, I don't think it was anything direct like Zoro was like, there's something I've been wanting to ask Vegapunk for a long time now specifically. Like, no, I don't, I don't think it was anything like that. I think it came out like that in the first translations of the chapter. But that wasn't that wasn't what it really was. Been lurking with you for a while. All I've ever wanted to be is as passionate about something as you are about One Piece. Keep it up. Passion! Yeah, I mean, like, it's a great story to get involved in. Uh, there's a lot of times when talking about it, I just feel immersed in Oda's world. And just like, oh, there's more to it than everything. Like, learning just about one or two characters, there's always, like, more to it than that. It's like, where do these characters come from? Oh, they come from, like, even if you take a random character, like, like Jerry. Remember Jerry? Uh, he's a member of Cypher Pool 6, and he's from Karate Island. And you, like, Karate Island's a place in the South Blue, and he's just, like, a throwaway who gives a shit character. But even, like, Jerry is fun. Karate Island! Uh, sure, the world government is bad, but there are far worse dictators in history. I mean, how many, oh, God. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's a reference. That's an old drunken peasants reference, and I love that you made that. Zeo de Dong. <laughs> yes, that that was funny. Uh, stupid name that guy's got. Zeo de Dong. <laughs> if you've watched Drunken Peasants a while back, like probably like God, eight years ago now, that that's a reference you probably get. Hey, Teching, since most people think the Garose don't have actual fruits, do you think they can still swim? So, if we're going along with the logic that. Eam is somehow either the avatar of, like, Mother Nature or is Mother Nature or some aspect of nature. It would make sense for them not to have devil fruits because it was stated Mother Nature hates the idea of devil fruits. The idea of devil fruits is, like, an affront to their creation. So it would make sense for them to swim, though. Like, they are actual yokai or powers were given to them via Eam. And, like, these are the original demons that existed. You know, these devil fruits are just cheap knockoffs. You know what I mean? And so, therefore, then you could swim. Uh, maybe they could. I kind of hope that they can. Because the idea of them just getting, like, all you got to do is just knock the Garose into the ocean and then 
Pip Pip Cheerio taken care of. Don't have to worry about them anymore. You know what I mean? Like, that would be bullshit. Uh, so I would be really scary if they were knocked into the water and then they just rose up out of the water like, this does not work on us. Like, whoa, okay. That would be a good advantage they would have. Uh, didn't Otis say Vegapunk would explain everything about Devil Fruits the moment he was introduced? I don't think he said the very moment he was introduced. I think Oda said that um, there is a certain scientist that will be showing up soon in the One Piece world that will reveal Devil Fruits. But when Oda said that, it was like 10 years before it. <laughs> so don't take what Oda says in terms of timelines very specifically. Because Oda said that like back in like, I don't know, Marine Ford maybe. Like I think a little bit after that. It might have been when he was explaining Devil Fruit reincarnation. Like it was a while before Egghead. Uh, theory, I thought after your video about the Gorosei, what if the only reason they kept the reason that Emu keep the Celestial Dragons is to make a few of them into God's Knights? Uh, what if the only reason that Eam keeps the Celestial Dragons is to make a few of them into God's Knights? I don't think Eam makes the... I don't think Eam makes the regular Tenrubito into God's Knights. I think that the God's Knights are just really strong members of the Tenrubito. So you have the Tenrubito, right? We were led to believe up until recently that Tenrubito are all just like, you know, weak and they just sit around all day and just eat food and just like, oh, yes, yes, so am amusing, bring in the slaves, dear. You know, it's like, yeah, it's all that stupid bullshit, right? And so that's like we thought the Tenrubito were, like they weren't really strong. They were just like, you know, fat aristocrats sitting around all day just shoving food in their mouth, right? So we know the Gorosei are, are, are Tenrubito and they can fight. And it's basically, yeah, they probably selected a few of them. I don't think Eam gave them special power or anything like that. It's just a few of the Tenrubito were selected to be warriors and to fight. Okay, so Garling was one of them, and he just trained to get really strong. And, like, like the vast majority of Tenrubito, though, really do just sit around and do nothing all day. Like, that is their main thing. But, like, there are a few. There's a small percentage that are really strong, yeah. Uh, and it would make sense because they would have access to the best, you know, people to train you in hockey. And if they had devil fruit abilities and all that jazz, they, the government would have access to like maybe some of the strongest devil fruits out there. Like maybe they're hoarding all the logias or as many as they can get their hands on, something like that. Yeah. Um, the, the Tenrubito are basically the wall E humans. Yeah. The humans that are just like floating around, oh, you know, just drinking soda, like hot dogs, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. After the last few chapters, do you think maybe the purpose of the God's Knights is to train and choose the next Garosei? All right, I'm going to be 100% with you with the God's Knights, okay? I don't think... I think the God's Knights are not part of anything involving, like, Eam or the Garosei or anything like that. I think the God's Knights are there as just, like, Odin needed a really strong group because there's going to be a lot of people fighting in this war coming up. And Oda was like, okay, I need like more characters for the, for the villain side of things. I need like, yeah, we have the Marines. Yeah. We have the cypher pole, but like the strongest members of cypher pole are kind of getting even whittled down. You know what I mean? Like Lucci and Kaku probably aren't going to be fighting here anymore. Stussy got taken out. Uh, maybe Stussy could be healed and stuff, but like a lot of the cypher pole zero members got taken out at Wano. It's like, it's like, I need, I think Oda just needed, another group at the last minute and then boom god's knights i think it happened in a very similar way to the way the supernovas were introduced where they were getting close to sab Odi. i think one of oda's editors was like hey maybe you should have some more characters and oda's like oh shit okay and then he created the supernovas i think it might have been something like that with the god's knights because they were never referenced up until then and it's a very similar vibe than we had with the supernovas and it's just like maybe it's the last minute and maybe somebody came up to oda like hey oda maybe you should have have some of the it makes like some stronger characters that work for the government be like oh okay god's knights and, and like yeah I, I think i think the god's knights are maybe going to be there to be fighting against like the grand fleet or some other characters maybe garling like doflamingo breaks out of prison and doflamingo ends up fighting garling or something like that would be really fucking cool you know what i mean like i think we just needed more characters and so oda just made more characters so that that's the way i'm looking at them right now i'm not looking at them like oh Eam selects them personally, or the Gorosei share power with them, or anything like that. Uh, maybe, maybe that is the case, but uh, for the most part, I think they're just kind of there to round out the um, the the battle, like the balance of powers when you get to the final war, kind of thing. Um, also, to maybe add the whole thing with Shanks and the whole situation there. 
Who? Why stronger characters? God's knights are basically teased since Sabaody. Uh, how are they teased since Sabaody? Uh, they te just because the Tenrabito are there. Uh, do, so do you think that Luffy will get another pirate epithet or One Piece ends? I mean, he's Straw Hat Luffy, but he'll like a lot of characters have multiple epithets. Like it's not just like there's characters that have multiple. So like Luffy could have King of the Pirates, but also Straw Hat Luffy. After the Undead Unluck anime ended on Friday, I read that, like the next fifty chapters. It's so good. Yeah, I need to get I need to get caught up with Undead Unluck. I think the last episode I watched was like episode fourteen. I need I need to get back into it. Film Red is coming to Netflix April 1st. I just watched it again recently. Like a couple weeks ago, I watched it again. Uh, it holds up. It's pretty good. They have a strong team name, the God's Knights. They do. They do. It's a strong team name, yes. Or Sun God Luffy. Yeah, like there's a lot of characters that, like, I'm just going to type in Zoro and just see what Zoro's, all of his epithets are, because he definitely has more than... Let's see what we got here. We got, yeah, aliases. We got, uh, well, he has Epithet is the Pirate Hunter, but they also might have aliases like Zoro Juro, you know, is what he was called in Wano. But I know there's characters that have way more. Like, Doflamingo, I think, has two. You have a thousand named characters. You need a few more. Like, okay, yeah, there's a lot. There's not a thousand. There's a lot. But, you know, a lot of those named characters are like, who cares? Like, random citizens. Like, a group. An organized group of people that could fight. You know? It's like, yeah, like, Foxy is a named character. You're gonna bring back Foxy? Like, we need someone to help fight in the final war. Let's bring back Foxy and... And maybe uh, Kuro and maybe uh, that little girl from Shell's Town that made the rice ball. Rika, we'll bring her back. <laughs> and it's just like, no, I, I could get it. Um, Heavenly Yaksha and also Joker. So that was like the two big ones for um, Doflamingo. Yeah, King of Hell is another one. Movie 6 is still the best one. Movie 6 is really good. It's a very different kind of One Piece movie. Whoop Slap needs to come back and fight. Damn straight. Why is nobody hyped about the fact that Luffy kind of beat Kizaru? You know, it's funny. I was going to make a whole video about that last week, and I just didn't. Uh, so I will at some point. I will talk about this now that we're going into a three-week break. I mean, I definitely have time. Um, but, yeah, I, I, Luffy basically grabbed him. He punched him out with the star gun. He came back. He grabbed him. He crushed him, and he threw him into a battleship. L Luffy won that fight. Like, I mean, you could argue Kizaru's sitting there and he's just like, oh, please, I don't want to get up anymore. I don't want to fight anymore. I, I killed my one of my friends. I don't want to do this anymore, right? Just leave me be. You could argue maybe Kizaru could still fight if he wanted to. Like, he has some gas left in the tank. But Luffy won that fight, at least. He won the fight in the same way that, like, Kaido won the first few fights with Luffy before Luffy finally came back and beat him, you know? High teching. After the last few chapters, I think Zoro has been suffering from that drug and meeting death in Wano. He was pretty winded for his win. Um, maybe you could argue that. Uh, that's something very similar to like kind of what happened at like after Thriller Bark at Sabote. He was more he was still weakened after Thriller Bark. He didn't really recover that much. Um, see, that's something that if Oda did address that directly, I think that would make sense. Like, oh, it was the cause of the drug. But if it's never brought up and if it's never referenced, we're led to just, like, I don't want to just assume, you know? It's like, oh, well, that was probably the drug, because that would be headcanon at that point, you know what I mean? And I do headcanon a lot. Don't get me wrong. I do headcanon a fucking lot in this story. But, like, if somebody did reference that, if someone, like, Chopper or somebody is like, oh, maybe you're still feeling the after effects of that drug, and that's why you're so winded. Like, maybe, sure, that's cool. But I don't think that's ever going to get brought up again. And if it doesn't get brought up again, we're just led to believe that Zoro could have beaten Luchi but didn't. Anything else would just be us assuming otherwise with, like, our own, like, headcanon, as I said. Don't you think Luffy being uh, swallowed uh, by huge snakes is significant? In Skypea, Little Garden, later Kaido, now the Sandworm. Uh, maybe, maybe there is something going along with that that Oda's trying to, like, do, like, symbolism or something. Like, a, I don't know, like, trapped in the belly of the whale, like Jonah and the whale or something like that. Like, I don't know. Um, like, no matter how many times the darkness tries to cover the sun god, he always breaches it. it uh, maybe? Maybe that's, like, a little, like, like, nice little reference there. Maybe when we go back in time and see Joy Boy, maybe Joy Boy was swallowed by a giant snake or a whale at some point. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a biblical reference there. Maybe it's beyond that. Or maybe Oda's just in divorce. <laughs> it's just like, Oda's in divorce. I don't want to tell you. That's just what he's got there. All right, let's, let's go through. I missed some super chats here. 
Um, do you think Teach could nullify the Gorose power? If they were Devil Fruit abilities, sure. If not, then probably not. Um, and the purpose of the God's Knights is to create a really strong knight. And when a really strong knight is created, Emu offers them immortality and places them in the Gorose. Um, oh, you're saying like the Gorose are former God's Knights. Maybe that that could be possible. That that could be a thing. We just need to learn more about the structure and everything like that. Um, like, does Saint Garling know about Eam? Does Saint Garling, who's the commander of the God's Knights, like, you know, I guess he would be maybe next in line to become Gorose. Then maybe if there's like, I guess the Rokusei or something like six of them. Uh, but maybe that could be the case. Uh, they could at least be recruited from there. Maybe they're given the planet names when they become Gorose. I think I answered these ones already. Yeah. What if Buggy awakened his devil fruit? Uh, it would be the end of days. Buggy awakening his devil fruit is actually legitimately terrifying. Uh, Whoop Slap and Condoriano will take out the entire world single-handedly. Yes. Yes, they will. I'm just waiting for them to meet up. You know, it's going to take a while because, you know, Condoriano is in the filler world and Buggy is in this dimension. So they're going to have to figure out a way to, like, rip a hole in the fabric of reality. So they're probably going to have to go see, like, Doctor Strange or some shit or Rick from Rick and Morty. But eventually they will meet each other and then some crazy shit's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, do you think the Giants are going to take Luffy to Shanks? And if so, do you think Shanks is going to be happy? One of the Luffy's Grand Fleet's captains did burn his Jolly Roger and then replace it with Luffy's. I mean, Luffy didn't tell him to do that, so I don't think Shanks is going to be mad about it. Like, why would Shanks be mad about it? He didn't. Luffy did not tell Bartolomeo to go attack Shanks' settlement. So, um, yeah, I don't think Shanks would be angry about that. Uh, in fact, I don't think I think that was probably the reason Shanks did not kill Bartolomeo. Like, if he heard Bartolomeo, like if if Bartolomeo had no connection to Luffy whatsoever, and he was just going around attacking his settlements, Shanks would probably just kill him or cut him in half, or cut off his leg, or an arm, or something like that, um, and just be like, don't be doing this shit again, or you're done, but maybe if Bartolomeo tells him about Luffy, maybe, like, Luffy just breaks his hand, <laughs> I mean, like, what if Shanks just breaks his arm, or something like that, like, fine, I, I gotta, I can't let you off without some kind of scolding, but you're friends with Luffy, so, like, okay, but don't be doing this shit again. Been watching you for eight years, do you think Zoro was ever stronger than Luffy at any point in the story? Um, Luffy stronger, I mean, like, you could maybe argue because Zoro is a little older than Luffy, maybe when they were like kids, maybe when they were like teenagers, maybe, you know, when like maybe when like Zoro was 16 and Luffy was 14, maybe, maybe Zoro was stronger. Um, when they fought at Whiskey Peak, it seemed like to me at Whiskey Peak, they were probably around the same power level. Like, I don't think there was that much of a gap between like that level, like East Blue Luffy and East Blue Zoro. Honestly, because they didn't have any of their crazy powerful attacks yet. Like, like Luffy had, um, like Luffy's battle axe was basically like his strongest move at that point, because that was the move he was practicing in the forest that we saw with Kuma's backstory. So like Luffy was using battle axe, and he's like, "Oh man, this is gonna be a great finishing move," you know. So the idea was battle axe was maybe his strongest move in East Blue. And then maybe he figured out Storm later when he fought against Crocodile. Like he came up with the idea of Gumu Gumu no Storm at the last minute, and he used that. But if we're going East Blue Luffy, Battle Axe, Zoro's strongest move would have been 3,000 Worlds, which he did use against Mihawk, but it didn't really do anything, uh, or his swords broke. So maybe 3,000 Worlds Zoro in East Blue could have pretty fucked up Luffy pretty bad, I think. I, I think that would have been a pretty solid hit. Also, the fact that Zoro had, like, Luffy's natural weakness, because Luffy is not resistant to slicing damage, and Zoro uses swords... So if Zoro really, really, really wanted to, like, hurt Luffy, he probably definitely would have been able to do that. Uh, but then, of course, after that, you slowly get into gear second and third, and then Zoro gets Ashura, and then we get into hockey, and then it's just like, yeah. I don't know if Zoro... I don't know if Otis said that he considers Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji equals. That's, that sounds like some weird power scaling stuff. I don't know if Zoro... I don't know if Oda even goes into that, but let me know. Maybe there's a cited source for that. Maybe it's on a SBS or something. I don't know what three body problem is. I've I've never seen that. I don't know what that is. Hey, I have a quick theory. Joy Boy in the OG Gumu Gumu when he died, it transformed into the Nico one. No, I'm pretty sure it was the original. Now, now the Gumu Gumu no Mi was mentioned to be a, a a name that the Gorosei gave it. 
because they didn't want the idea of the sun god fruit to exist. I mean, they, they couldn't stop it from existing, but they could at least change the records and be like, oh, no, that's not the sun god fruit. No, it's not a mythical zone. No, it's just the rubber rubber fruit. It turns you into rubber. That's all it is, and that's all it will ever be because the idea of becoming a pair uh, like an awakened form of that fruit is so rare so now i'm pretty sure joy boy and, and from what we saw in the last chapter broggy even said like hey strad you know that's the appearance of the sun god how did you know what it was i, I like to think that joy boy had that form like eight nine hundred years ago during the void century and the giants knew about it and that's where the uh, image came from was joy boy using it and then cut to 900 years later and then dorian broggy heard about it you know from their legends and stuff um, I found you through the season five ja Samurai Jack video. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. If you needed a life or death surgery, who would you rather perform it, Law or Chopper? Oh, Law, 100%. Law is definitely more of a surgeon than Chopper is. Chopper is more of a, like, clinical doctor where you go to if you have, like, a disease. But if you need a surgery done, you don't go to Law. Go to Law. Because he, not only is Law a master surgeon, but he also can perform surgery in ways that you would never, like, Chopper would never be able to do. Like, if you were having clogged arteries, like, oh, there's three arteries in your heart that are clogged with plaque, Law can literally just, doesn't even need to cut you open with blood. He could just literally pop your fucking heart out and just, like, clean out the fucking arteries. And then pop it back in, and then you're good. <laughs> like, he could perform surgeries in ways that you never knew, you know? Oh, I have a brain tumor. Okay, I'm just gonna remove your brain. All right, there's the tumor. Just slowly just remove the tumor. And sterilize it. Pop it back in your head. Close down your skull and you're good. <laughs> yeah, go to law, 100%. Chopper would be good, but Chopper would have to do it, like, the old-fashioned way. Like, he would have to, like, sutures and, like, cut you open and, like, perform, like, open-heart surgery, like, the classic way. He could do it. It's just laws is a lot safer because you can't really die of blood loss. One of, the, one of the major concerns when you're performing that type of surgery is blood loss. You wouldn't have to worry about that with law's ability. I think people think Blackbeard represents the moon since Luffy is the sun god, but I personally believe he represents a black hole. I've seen both of these, and I'm really torn. I'm really back and forth between both of these ideas. Um, when Oda drew Blackbeard as a child, when he drew all of the warlords as childs, uh, child's children, uh, you see the moon in the background. It's like he's sitting under the moon, and he's really sad, and he's an orphan, and he's like, yeah, no one loves me, you know, that kind of stuff. So people are like, oh, it's the moon, he's the moon, or the dark side of the moon, right? And then you also have the idea that he's literally a black hole because he has a technique called Black Vortex and also, I think also Black Hole, I think he does have a technique called that as well. Um, and, you know, you're talking about space and the sun god and all the different planets, so it's like Blackbeard represents the collapsed star or the black hole, you know, something like that. I can see it both ways. Um, maybe, maybe Oda might do both references. He might be like, I'm the moon, but also I'm a black hole. He could do both, you know. Uh, can you please do a video where you go over every question that has been answered yet. Like, what happened to Zunisha? Every question of One Piece. Um, I don't even know where I would be able to go to... I would need a list. I would need to go and find a list of every single question. And uh, I don't know if that list even exists. So, make up a list and I guess I'll go down it. <laughs> uh, perfect timing for needed something to listen to on my walk. Do we see Elbaf by October? I think we see Elbaf by October. I think we'll be there by October. Yeah. Early Zoro versus King equals Shanks. Late Zoro versus King equals Mihawk. That's the difference in Swordsman versus not. I mean, sure. I mean, that's one way to look at it. I mean, that I'm not great at power scaling, guys. Like, anybody that's watched my... Excuse me. Anybody that's watched my power scaling videos knows I'm not great at power scaling. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, sure, sure. Early Zoro versus King equals Shanks. Late Zoro versus King. Yeah, sure, why not? Go ahead. Same difference. Strange thought. Sanji puts armament hockey into his pants, not his leg. Yes. And his shoes. And his socks. Blackbeard equals a black hole. Eneru equals the moon because he's opposite Luffy. Ooh, but Blackbeard's also the kind of the opposite of Luffy because we saw that at Jaya with the pies and everything like that. Like all the food Blackbeard likes, Luffy hates and vice versa. So maybe there's that.
You missed the super chat. It's okay. I have them. They're all saved. It's all good. It's all fine. Joshua. I don't see that one. Wait, hold on. Was it Joshua? Hold on a second. Joshua, you missed a super chat. I don't know if you... Oh, you might have not been referring to yours, but I'll go back to the super chats in a second. Don't worry about it. They're all saved. Do you think that giant robot can hurt the Gorose? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, but it's also kind of arguable that, like, that thing can't move very fast. Like, it took this long for just for the thing to stand up, and now it's moving. And I don't know how much power the thing's got left, so I have no idea. Um, if it has some kind of special ability to harm the Garose, but just, like, hitting it really hard is not going to do anything. A video on all the major One Piece incidents. Oh, that could be something. Yeah, that, that might narrow it down a little bit more. That might actually get to a list that I can actually look at. Since OP is going to be on break, think about doing a review on My Hero Academia. Any thoughts on the Netflix Avatar series? Ever think about doing an OG series? Uh, okay, so My Hero Academia is on break this week, I think. I, I didn't see a chapter this week yet, so I think it's on break this week as well. Uh, Netflix Avatar. I watched the first four episodes. I thought it was okay. I didn't like it as much as I like the One Piece live action, though. Um, I don't know what the popular opinion on... I, have to, I actually have not looked up a lot on the opinion of the Netflix live action Avatar. Uh, I know it got renewed for season two and three, I guess, but I, I didn't really read up a lot about... Um, like, what people's opinion of it was overall. I know we're also getting a lot more Avatar content coming up. Like, we are getting an anim we are getting an animated sequel series to the original. With, like, Aang and Katara and Sokka and Zuko and Toph, like, just being adults. And that's gonna be... That's the thing I'm honestly really excited to see. Uh, like, the live action was okay. Uh, if they come out with some other stuff, sure. But, like, that's the thing. And I think that's... Also, the sequel series. They are doing a new Avatar series with an Earthbender Avatar. Because in the next in line after Korra... So that I'm looking forward to, and I'm looking forward to, like, the grown-up versions of, like, Aang and everybody. Um, everything else that comes out, I'm like, oh, live-action Avatar. Okay, yeah, it's okay. It's good. But it's just it's just not what I'm really excited to see. Man, a lot of people don't like... I, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but, like, like, Legend of Korra is bad. It's like, look, I have some issues with Legend of Korra. I have way more issues with Korra than I do with the original, but... uh. I don't want to get off on a tangent about that because we're still talking about the chapter here. So One Piece questions. Chapter One Piece questions because I don't want to get... We can talk about Korra after, but I like to spend at least the first 45 minutes, hour, at least talking about One Piece in these. And I can get off on tangents really easily. Like, look at this. It's a Dragon Ball. See? You did talk about Dragon Ball. Okay. Now everybody's just talking about Legend of Korra. Shit! What does teching mean? Uh, teching? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it has something to do with Zoe 101, but I'm not sure. See, I'm getting off on tangents. Korra does not count as canon. Yes, it fucking does. Shut up. Yes, it does. It's canon. Uh, I know you hate Foxy, but imagine if an awakened slow, slow for... Look, the, the slow, slow for... Listen, I'll tell you what. I made a video about this years ago. I, I think I put Foxy on there. Uh, I made a video on the Devil Fruits, like, like basically Blackbeard having a hit list. You know, like, all the different Devil Fruits that he wants to get on his crew. And I think I put Foxy's Slow Slow Fruit on there. The Slow Slow Fruit is a good fucking fruit. Like, I'm not debating that. It's a fruit that, like, slows you down. That's, like, Matrix bullet time. Like, you're playing super hot or some shit. That's really cool. Fine with me. But I'd be okay with, uh, like, Blackbeard killing Foxy. Shit, are you cutting him in half? <laughs> And then dicing him up and then Vasco shot lighting him on fire with alcohol. I'd be okay with that. And then somebody getting his fruit. You know what's crazy about Blackbeard's crew? Is other than Blackbeard himself and the 10 Titanic captains, we don't really know anybody else on his crew that's like significant. And what I mean by that is like, does he have any strong people other than the 10 Titanic captains? Do the captains have like an understudy or like a lieutenant or like vice captains? Because it's a little weird that, like, Blackbeard isn't... It isn't just him and ten people, like Luffy. That, that's all the Straw Hats are. I mean, the Straw Hats have the Grand Fleet and everything. But, like, on the Sunny, it's just Luffy and then his crew. And then there's nobody else. There's no, like, like little... Like, 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 uh, like a small unit they have hanging out on the crew or anything like that, right? Foxy is unfortunately canon, yes. Um, so, 
I wonder if there's anybody in Blackbeard's crew because they if they get more than ten devil fruits, they'd have to start passing them out to like other people, you know. So I, I hope to see some other people on Blackbeard's crew that have like some weird devil fruit abilities, you know, and like the slow slow fruit could be one of them. Yeah, all the people on Hachinosu were basically part of Blackbeard's crew. It's just nobody was singled out as like, this is old uh, Molotov throwing Bill. He throws Molotovs. <laughs> this is Scimitar Sam. He uses a scimitar. You know, like nobody, we didn't get title boxes for any of them. They were just generic pirates. But uh, if Blackbeard is going around hunting rare devil fruits, is he just going to like, all right, I have two of them. And my crew all have devil fruits, and now we won't look for any more. It's like, you think that he would give, like, some other fruits to some people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I should really get done with that One Piece live action finale. I, I, I had two more episodes to go. I should just knock both of them out in one episode and just finish it. I am in this with no audio, and this is so weird. I know, right? How about Stronger? Stronger has a devil fruit. He has the he has the uh, Pegasus zone. Tech Dog. Any new series you think about covering? Any new series questions? What are your favorite types of pizza? Oh, I love pineapple pizza. Get a good Hawaiian pizza. I'm I'm happy. Uh, no new series involving like anything else yet. Um, you know, I have some ideas for live streams and stuff, but I, I don't I don't have any ideas for like a brand new series from Techie 101. This. Um, I do have a lot of stuff coming up though, cause I'm going to London in two months. I'm going to be going to London MCM. So I'm going to be there and I'm going to be, Oh, I got this today. I, I got to show you this guys. So I'm going to be at Teco, like I, the, the convention in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania that I'm at every year in uh, July. And I'm going to be doing a one piece trivia kind of contest, like a game show sort of thing. And I'm getting this ridiculous outfit together for it. And I got the jacket today and I got to go show you this. This, this is one piece related. This isn't a tangent. Check this out. <laughs> Check this shit out, guys. I'm so happy. I got this today in the mail, and I'm so happy that it fits. I didn't have to mess around. I'm always iffy buying suits and things online off Amazon because I just don't know, like, the size chart and everything. But uh, there we go. <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear, like, a dress shirt under this and, like, a red bow tie, and, like, I'm going to have fun socks on and everything like that. So it's – I wanted – 1970s, very ostentatious, uh, somewhat flamboyant game show host. It's just like, it's just, it's going to be so loud. It's going to be so ridiculous. I'm going to have like, I'm even thinking about wearing like, I have a golden like outfit. I'm going to think about getting like a silver, like a uh, silver vest and then like a red bow tie. It's going to be so ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I'm gold to, I'm guild to Zoro. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. I have the power of the gold, gold fruit. Shiny. It's all sequined. It's sequins. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually a very comfortable jacket. Like, I was worried because it wasn't, this was like 40 bucks. It wasn't like that much money. And some suits, if you've ever, I've gone through a lot of suits in my years doing YouTube, and I can tell you a lot of suits can be very expensive. But um, this one is actually fairly comfortable, and it actually has pockets inside of it. That's great. They even gave me an extra button. Yeah, get a dofy feather thing. Oh, a boa! I should just walk in wearing this a bow tie and a feathered boa. <laughs> like, yes. Oh, uh, man. I've used feathered boas before, but, man, they get they get feathers everywhere. I'd be walking through a convention, just be, like, feathers all over the floor. Oh, man. Does it make things rubber or does it make things cartoonish? Uh, cartoonish? Both. The idea is it's rubber hose animation, old school. Like, you know, somebody gets hit with a mallet and they turn into an accordion. Like, what? You know, it's like that kind of stuff. So it is rubber, but it's it's toon force from like from a meta perspective, we would call this ability a toon force. In the context of One Piece, it'd be like everything's turning rubbery and stretchy and weird. You know, like that's the way that they would refer to it as, right? Um, how loud do you want this suit? The One Piece is real. Yes. Oh man, yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I'm I'm excited. I put this on. I'm like, ah, it fits. Great. Okay. 
You talked about whether or not Vegapunk is alive because he was shown. Oh, yeah, yeah. I missed that. That was something in the review I missed. So when we see the little mini map of everybody running around Egghead, we have a zoom in of Vegapunk and Sanji. And I was like, oh, they're showing Vegapunk as an icon. So maybe he's still alive. I didn't zoom in far enough. And I could have because I have my giant tablet over there. But I could have zoomed in far enough. And you do see X's in his eyes. So, yeah, he's probably dead. He's most likely dead. What do you expect from the Yamato cover story? Also, we're all boy, we're all, will our boy Kaku survive? What do you think Vegapunk will reveal? I have no idea what Vegapunk will reveal. I made a whole video about that. I mean, I, I, I go through my ideas there on that. Um, I think Kaku's going to make it out of this okay. Ka Kaku is in the bubble, which might actually provide him a level of security. Like, if he's in the bubble and the Goro say, like, lets out a screech sound... You know, that, that might blow away Kaku in the bubble, and it might land and pop the bubble, so the bubble might have taken most of the impact. Because Kaku is very injured right now, so hopefully the bubble will somewhat protect him. Um, Yamato's cover story, I feel like it's just mostly going to be, it's going to be a journey through the, each of the shrines, so we're going to go to each of the regions of Wano. Uh, the scabbards are all going to show up at some point, and maybe ultimately we're going to find out what happened to Kaido and Big Mom. Uh, maybe something like that. Could Yamato join the Revolutionary Army? Absolutely. I feel like Yamato is going to leave Wano at some point and get out there in the world, just like Odin did, really. Aren't the trees on Egghead made of metal? I, I think some of them are made of metal and some of them are actual trees. Because sometimes you look at them and they're like, that's a metal tree, and other times you see them and they're actually woods. So I think there's both. Bonnie can do a time skip with the straw hats. Yeah, and she actually already did because she already aged up Luffy and Chopper to old men. So there we go. Ooh, a hundred doll hairs from CI23422. Bunch of random numbers. I wonder how strong uh, Dory and Broggy are. They've been training for over 50 years. They've been training for over 100 years. And the Marines only know about their past exploits. I wonder what these exploits were since Rox was essentially erased from history. I mean, I don't think it has anything to do... Oh, oh, you're just saying because Rox's stuff was erased from history. Maybe Dorian Broggy's shit was erased from history. It's definitely lived on to the modern day because um, the Marines from nowadays, even witnessing the, um, uh, the Giants arriving, knew they were the Giant Warrior Pirates. They were like, it's the Giant Warrior Pirates! No one's seen them in like a hundred years! That is a little weird that they would know about them, but they wouldn't know about Rox, who was like comparatively only 40 years ago, Okay. So maybe the giant warrior pirates left more of an effect on the world. That, I mean, to be fair, Rox was insane, but like the giant warrior pirates coming to your town and rampaging through the whole place. Also, Dory and Broggy were not the progenitors of the giant warrior pirates. They didn't create them. Um, you know, we had uh, Mount Beard and Fall Beard as the original captains, and maybe like they go back even hundreds, even to the Void Century. Like they're, the giant warrior pirates could have been around for 800 years or longer, thousands of years maybe. And there's different captains each time. And Dory and Broggy were like the newest members. Dory and Broggy were relatively young when they went out to sea. They were only like 50, 60 years old, which by giant standards, that's only like in your 20s. Um, yeah. So I, I think the giant warrior pirates definitely left more of an impact on the world because they've probably been, you know, raiding and pillaging and murdering for like 800, 800 years or longer. Yeah, they were probably during the Void... Definitely the Giants were active during the Void Century. That's why we're going to Elbaf now, because we're learning a lot about the Giants, who were very integral during the Void Century. Damn, I love this jacket. This is such a stupid jacket, but I love it. <laughs> Shows up well on camera. I'm going to be filming the, uh, like the game show thing, too. It won't be a live stream, but I'll be streaming. I'll, I'll be recording it for a video. How did Mr. 3 beat Dorian Broggy in Little Garden? Uh, by underhanded tactics. He made it so that uh, basically um, he... Okay, so the Straw Hats gave Broggy some booze to give to Dory. And Mr. 3 swapped out the booze for like exploding, like a bomb. And so Broggy went over to Dory and like, Here, Dory, have a drink! And Dory's like, Yeah, 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 thank you! Glug, glug, glug. Taking a drink from his friend, and then it blows up in his stomach and knocks him out for, like, a while. Not really a long time. Maybe knocks him out for, like, you know, an hour. Little Garden doesn't take that long, right? And it's like, he gets knocked out. And then, uh, when Broggy was going to strike Dory and the thing exploded... 
Uh, Mr. Three also made wax, so Bra uh, Dory slipped, and then he fell down and hit him. And then uh, they, as Broggy was in grief and just like, oh no, my friend, that he like pins him to the ground. And he was about to break out at one point, and then he stabs him, and he's about to break out again at the same time Zoro is about to cut off his feet. And then that's when Luffy and Usopp show up and like, it's time to fight. And then Zoro just kind of like, all right, I guess we could just chill out here, giant. And the giant's like, okay, you know, um, underhanded tactics, man. But Dory survived that bomb. Fine. A fucking bomb blew up in his stomach and he was out for like an hour and he's like, oh, I'm okay. And he was back to fighting again. So there you go. What do you think Oda is saving the reveal of rocks for? Uh, probably the backstory involving Blackbeard, I would say. Once we get Blackbeard's backstory, maybe Roger's backstory as well, we'll, we'll see what rocks looks like. It just wasn't meant to be during Kuma's backstory. I, I corrected maybe like a third of those exams. I am not a great professor. That bomb did less damage than bad mutton. Damn straight. Uh, so should Mino Rhinoceros be the horse horse fruit? Uh, we never got the title of Rhinoceros. We never got the, uh, oh, did it, was it, was it stated to be Rhino Rhino no me? Because if it was, I mean, like, you know, Oda's usually good about those classifications. But I, I don't know if their devil fruits were ever actually said. No, so their devil fruits were never actually confirmed. It was never actually said what they were. He has eaten an as-of-yet unnamed zone. So, yeah, it would be, I guess, uh, if it goes with the same scheme, it would be horse, horse, fruit, model, rhino. If if we're going along with that logic. But, yeah, Oda's pretty good with that stuff, because look at freaking Black Maria's devil fruit ability, which is the Rosamagalia Gravageli, which is a very specific ancient spider from, like, the Triassic period. Discotheking is real. Do you remember... <laughs> The very first day of September. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it, Gary. I love it. Uh, thoughts on what made the giant robot attack 200 years ago? Well, I mean, I guess we're implying that a member of, uh, like, Joy Boy might have awakened. Like, um, um, a user of the Nika fruit awakened 200 years ago and activated the giant. Maybe. Maybe Luffy wasn't the only one to activate the power in 800 years. Maybe there was a couple of other people throughout the centuries. You look like Elvis. I do not, but I will appreciate the comparison. The 21st night of September. Uh, I don't, I'm not great with lyrics. I always thought it was the first night of September. Yeah, everyone let Joy Boy down. That'll be the next video, because I really didn't talk that much about the giant in the review. But uh, yeah, Zunisha said, uh, had an apology letter. There was an apology letter on the Poneglyph addressed to Joy Boy from Poseidon, I guess. And then there was also the Iron Giant apologizing to Joy Boy. So, you know, I have an idea. I don't know if it's... I, I gotta think about it, and there's other ideas out there, too. So, I'm gonna throw this out there at you. What if uh, during this conflict between the will of D or the clan of D, the ancient kingdom and the world government or the 20 kings, what if it's a situation where Joy Boy wanted to use like the nuclear option? Like he's like, let's use the ancient weapons against the, the 20 kings. And everybody was thinking like, OK, Joy Boy's going a little bit too insane with this. And then they betrayed him. Like, Zunisha and the Giants, everybody, like, betrayed Joy Boy. Like, okay, Joy Boy, you're a little bit too insane with this. We're not going to do that. Well, then they ended up losing. And then because they lost, now the world government took over and everything's all messed up. So maybe maybe Joy Boy wanted to use the ancient weapons and everybody else betrayed him because, like, no, we're not doing that. That's too, that's too far. And now everything happened and it's like, oh, shit, maybe Joy Boy might have been right on that one. Maybe if we would have used Pluton, maybe we would have won. You know? That's, a, that's the idea I popped into my head. I have no idea. LOL, no. I'm like, okay, well, that was an idea that popped into my head. Did Toki know Joy Boy? Never mentioned him, but maybe. Uh, 
What if the Iron Giant is an ancient weapon? I feel like there's a lot of ancient giants, uh, Iron Giants. I feel like this is just one of several. Like, I don't think this was the only one. Joy Boy didn't have reliable friends like Luffy and let them in charge of things they weren't able to accomplish letting Joy Boy down. Ooh, maybe. That'd be better. But what were, like, the specifics of that, though? Kaku won't make it. I think he will. I think Kaku's going to make it out of this okay. No, Joy Boy was apologizing to Poseidon. Okay, hold on a minute. Because I got to remember, I got to look up that Poneglyph really quick. Because I don't remember if it was signed from Joy Boy or if it was uh, penned to Joy Boy. Give me a sec here. Okay. Written by Joy Boy. Okay, so that one was written by Joy Boy directly. Okay, so it was an apology to Poseidon from Joy Boy. Okay. A lot of apologies going back and forth. A lot of, lot of apologies. Ancient drama at its best. Yeah, it's like when they found that, um, uh, I think it was in Sumer. So, like, one of the first civilizations, possibly the first, like, actual, like, definitional definition of a civilization. So you had Sumer in uh, Mesopotamia, right? And there was, like, a, like, a cuneiform plaque or something we found, or, like, a big, like, stone tablet that had, like, writing on it. And it was deciphered. And it was basically a complaint letter. It was basically like some dude got really shitty quality copper to work on and he was writing a complaint letter. Like the world's first Karen. Like he was writing a complaint letter. Like this copper sucks. How dare you? I'm going to go to uh, like Jeremiah's copper next time, you son of a bitch. And like, <laughs> like he sent him like a complaint letter. It's like ancient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe ancient drama at its best. People have always been complaining about shit, ladies and gentlemen. If that ever makes you feel better about yourself. Uh, the first ever recorded complaint. Oh, I love that story, yeah. Straw Hats were sorry for not being with Luffy when Ace died, so when Joy Boy lost a fighter, a loved one, our friends, friends could be sorry too. That's another angle. That's a good one. Yeah, the idea that maybe somebody died close to Joy Boy and they weren't there for him. Maybe these were all members of Joy Boy's crew. Maybe Poseidon and Zunisha and the Iron Giant were all part of uh, his crew. This isn't copper. You just painted some rocks. Why Jeremiah? I don't know. It just sounded like an old-fashioned name. It just popped into my head. Maybe Jebediah or maybe like uh, Gilgamesh or something. In Kidu, I, I don't know. And now we have Twitter for that. Look how far we've come as a species. I, I have this headcanon where Jinbei dies at the end, saving Luffy in the fight against Blackbeard. It'll be the ultimate test of his resolve. You know, people bring this up a lot. Like, if any of the Straw Hats are going to die, who do, you, who do you think is going to die? I always kind of joke around and say Chopper. But um, I could see any of the Straw Hats. I even was going to make a series about this. I made it to Zoro and Nami, and then I kind of got kind of depressed, and I didn't want to make that series anymore. Um, but I could see any of the Straw Hats sacrificing themselves for Luffy, not just Jinbei. I could see it from Jinbei, but I could see Usopp sacrificing himself for Luffy. I could see Sanji doing that. I could see Frankie doing that. I could see anybody sacrificing their lives for Luffy. Um on the Straw Hat crew. That's kind of the whole point. They're kind of like a one big family and they're going to be there to help Luffy achieve his dream no matter what. Just imagine if Brooke dies before meeting Laboon. That would be so tragic. I think Brooke has to... He's going to survive. And maybe you can kind of look at the dreams that they want. Like, Jinbei's dream is kind of more of like Otohime's dream. Like, he kind of wants all of the... He wants equality for his people. He wants all of the fishmen and merfolk to live under the same sun on the surface with humans and to abolish the Tenryubito system. Like, if Jinbei were to die, it could be a thing where, yeah, he dies, but his sacrifice led to his dream, which he wanted all the time. You know, so you could kind of see that. Like, Brooke needs to physically see Laboon. Like, that needs to happen. Ancient robot might have been sorry. He might have just been apologizing for trying to attack 
Marijuana and it didn't work. And then he powered down and he was kicked off the mountain. He might just be apologizing, maybe not necessarily from something that happened 800 years ago. He might be apologizing for the last 200 years. Yeah, I'm thinking he was maybe a buccaneer. This might be a story that Brooke is telling 100 years later. Once again, I don't think Brooke is going to live like Brooke is immortal. I think the fruit is going to... The effects of the fruit stop after you've lived essentially two lifetimes. So Brooke lived 38 years in his first life, and now he's lived um, 52 years in his second life. So I think we're literally just going to get to a point where Brooke reaches like a limit and his fruit just, just peters out and he dies. I don't think he's going to live forever. Gene Bay is the only man Robin is called handsome. Damn straight. Scopper Gabon is hiding on Elbaf. Do, do, do. Maybe. Do you think Usopp or Nami will eat a devil fruit power to power up? I think Vivi might more than those two. I think Usopp and Nami are pretty set with their power systems and they have the, Nami has Zeus now. So I think she's okay. Um, but if Vivi joins again, I think Vivi would need something to get her up to a level of power with the rest of them. Yeah, a lot of people focus on the Yomi Yomi no Me like it breaks all the rules of Devil Fruits. I, I never felt like it did, you know? Like, he has some advantages because he's a skeleton now, but, like, um, I, you know, eventually it, it, it's, it stays out of circulation longer just because of the nature of it, but I think once you die uh, the second time, it goes back into circulation just normally like all the other ones. Yeah. Vivi could get the paw paw fruit. That is that is a very popular theory that's out there right now. Yes, I really hope she gets the paw 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 fruit. Yeah. What if crocodile dies and Vivi eats that fruit? Um, then she would have a really badass logia. Uh, I don't know if she would be too happy about it, but she would have a really badass logia. What if the Gorosei's weakness is salt? Oh, you just give them a lot of salt. <laughs> All right, cool. You just go up to the Gorosei and be like. Lucci should have won that fight because of these reasons. Like, oh, so much salt! <laughs> and their heads just explode. Uh, I, I like the idea of Evie getting the snow snow fruit, too. I don't think that's going to happen now. If there's any fruit that is going to be in the reincarnation soon, it would probably be Kuma's. I can see that one. Yeah, Kuma just kind of showed up to punch Saturn and then just kind of locked up. He, he he did that whole thing to reach Egghead, and then he punched Saturn once, and then his his servos locked up or something, and now he can't do anything anymore. So now he's kind of just dead weight, you know? So I think there's something else that has to be done with Kuma for him to be there. Like, so much of a hullabaloo was made about Kuma come hell or high water reaching that island. He protected Bonnie, and he punched Saturn but there's got to be more to it than, like, like from his perspective as a parent wanting to protect his child, that makes sense. But from, like, a storytelling perspective, like, there's got to be another reason Kuma is there for his character. Something has to happen with that. Yeah. It was a good punch. It was a fantastic punch. 10 out of 10 punch. But uh, that there has to be, like, something else going on here. Kuma merges with the giant robot. Okay, I'd be fine with that. Kuma downloads his data into the giant iron giant. I, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, sure. I mean, he saved his daughter. Is that not enough? I mean, yes, from from the perspective of Kuma and Bonnie, like, saving his daughter. But, like, what is Kuma going to do now? Is he just, like, there? And, like, okay, we bring him to Elbaf. Um, maybe they could fix him, like, an Android 16 kind of situation. They can get him back up. Like, there's got to be something else with Kuma going on, like, storytelling-wise. Otherwise, it's just like, yeah, Kuma's there. Okay. He's a robot, but he's there. Like, all right, either fix him up so he could fight in the final war or like the, pow the power passes on to somebody else. That's the kind of idea. Akira Toriyama. I'm sorry, Joy Boy. Oh, my God. 
Bonnie can still order Kuma to teleport them away. Yeah, if he could move, because he's, like, really, like, they have to, like, lift him up and carry him. Like, he's not even, like, being able to move right now. I think he used up all of his power just to protect Bonnie, and then after that, it just kind of, you know, his, his battery died or something. Frankie deserves Kid's fruit if Kid is, in fact, dead. I don't think Kid's dead. Um, Kid, we're, we're going to catch up with Kid probably at Elbaf. Uh, maybe he's, maybe they find him floating in the ocean as they're approaching Elbaf or something. I just, I just, yeah, I don't think Kid is dead, but at the same time, I don't see the Giants, like, after obliterating the Victoria Punk and all the people on board getting, like, falling down and drowning after they were about to attack the island, I don't see the Giants being like, well, they were trying to kill us all, but, eh, we could fish them out of the water and heal them up, why not, right? It's like, I don't see that going down, so either they're floating in the ocean, they ended up on a deserted island, or maybe they floated to another part of Elbaf that's, like, uninhabited, and they're living there right now, they're trying to nurse their wounds. They're not dead, but, like, I don't see them showing up to Elbaf, like, yeah, there were some people that attacked the island a while ago, but they're in the, they're in the hospital right now. It's like, what? No, why would they be in the hospital? They were attacking you. Frankie gets Kuma's fruit for some reason. I'd be all right with that. When will I cosplay as Cavendish? Maybe not this this year at the convention. Maybe next year I'll cosplay as Cavendish. Kid will probably be thrown into prison again. He really has nobody to blame but himself this time. I mean, he could have... There were a bunch of different ways he could have approached this. Like, the first time, sure. Like, Apu was double-crossing them, and he shows up, and then Kaido shows up, and it's like, okay. I, I mean, you. I guess Kid could have bowed to Kaido right there, but, like, he was kind of caught with his pants down on that one. But this one is, like, Killer even told him multiple times, like, are you sure you want to go to Elbaf? Hell yeah! Shanks is there, are you sure? Hell yeah! Like, he took your arm last time, Kid, are you really sure? Hell yeah! Like, all right, I guess, uh... Okay. So, um, yeah, th he could have he could have avoided this. The kid pirates have found a completely watertight sunken city and now live as kings. <laughs> yes, and they have learned to talk fish. Exactly. I mean, there are other underwater locations other than Fishman Island, I would assume. There are, there are towns under there that we saw during Hachi's seafloor stroll. Yeah. Don't know if there's air in them, but they're down there. Yeah, I love murder. Murder machine killer. All right, kid. Now, don't be too bloodthirsty now. <laughs> he is the most rational human on their crew. It's so funny. Eustace is literally a hothead. He is. He is. He was probably riding high on the idea that he just beat two Yonko. He was like, yeah, we beat Kaido and Big Mom, so we're pretty awesome. I'm sure Kid probably rationalized it in his head like he did more of the work. <laughs> yeah, I did most of the work when fighting Big Mom, actually. I did most of the work. I, I softened Kaido up for Luffy. And, uh, Kid is the kind of guy to like, rationalize that shit in his head. Like, So if you really think about it, I'm the one that actually beat both Yonko. I could take care of Shanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think they're going to try to build a Mother Flame Egghead Island? Uh, maybe. They're going to find Kid missing a leg and it will become an alchemist. Yeah, there you go. Then you could become you could become Edward Elric. Where's Law now? Is he going to Elbaf as well? A um, lot of ideas. I made a video about that on where they could end up. Uh, I kind of want them to run into the Cross Guild. Because Law has no connection with any members of the Cross Guild. Like, Luffy knows Crocodile and Buggy very well. Zoro knows Mihawk very well. Law has no connection pretty much with any of them, except, well, maybe Buggy, because Buggy and, and Mihawk, because they were all part of the Warlords. But I don't know if they ever had a meeting together, because all the Warlords getting together for a meeting is very, very rare. Okay, like, that's something that doesn't happen very often. Even when there are meetings, usually a lot of them don't even show up. So, Law probably was aware that, like, yeah, Mihawk is the greatest swordsman in the world, I know about him, but he never might have had a direct interaction with him. And Law might know about Buggy from just being a warlord, but he never actually sat down and talked to the guy. So now it might be a thing where they show up at the cross guild and be like, oh, that's the former warlord along with me. You know, that's Law. He's like, okay. And so Law might be with the cross guild. That might be a way to kind of coalesce everything together. Law and Beppo. 
Uh, or or Sphinx. That's another idea I think I brought up in that video, too. Like, he could show up at Sphinx, and then Marco could heal him. And then maybe Law gets tied into the whole plot of saving Weevil. I don't know. Shanks, baby shakes, Mihawk. Baby shark, baby shark. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the crocodile is Luffy's mom thing is not even, like, a serious theory. It's more of a meme at this point. Like, people just say it just because. The crocodile is Luffy's mom. Like, obviously, yeah. The eye patch pirate is the man marked by flames. Could be. We saw the peg leg and the hook. Yep. There's no eye patch pirate yet. In all of One Piece, not a single pirate has worn an eye patch. And this is true. Do you think he could have been a woman still? Sure, but he's not Luffy's mom. Yeah, sure. Uh, Crocodile could have ran into um, Ivankov at some point and switched sexes, uh, definitely. But um, doesn't necessarily mean that um, Luffy... It does, definitely doesn't mean he's Luffy's mom. Who has the parrot? Uh, like a parrot pirate. Uh, I feel like there's some character that has, like, a parallel with that somewhere. Redbeard the pirate. That reminds me of that Scooby-Doo villain. Redbeard! Yeah, Lucci, maybe. Lucci has Hattori. There you go. That's close enough. Pigeon, parrot, same deal. Also, Marco is a parent for, parent for Whitebeard. Yeah, that was funny. There was that one joke there, yeah. What's your issue with Cor Korea? I, I think you meant Korra. I mean, we can talk about this situation in North Korea right now, but I feel like not really the apt time for that, okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it's been about an hour. I think we talked about mostly things. And now I, I have, th I mean, like, we got three weeks for this shit now, right? We have three weeks. In fact, hold on. Let me check something really quick. I think Artur mentioned when the next chapter is going to come out. Um, yeah, it's four weeks of wait time. I think Artur made a post about this. Yeah. So it's about a month, like, I guess. Okay, so what's today? March 24th is today. So the chapter's officially coming out today, or did come out today. So then one week, two, three, four, maybe the, maybe the last week of April. So maybe, like, the early release would be, like, 26th, the April 26th. That's a Friday. And then the official would be April 28th. That would be a Sunday, probably something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Korra. Um, the main issues I have, I liked. I liked season one of Korra. I, I thought season one was fine. Um, I liked. I liked a lot of Korra. The only issue with Korra that I really have, it kind of stems from the decisions that they made in season two, uh, because they basically they expanded the lore of the Avatar, which was good. But it really just comes down to, I don't like the way they expanded that lore. I like the idea of Juan being the first Avatar. That's fine. The whole story of the humans living on the backs of the Lion Turtles. That was fine because the Lion Turtles taught like the original energy bending. Like That's fine. They started to lose me with the whole idea of... Uh, and actually, you know what? Um, I think it was... Who was the guy? That, uh, Kaiser. I think it was Kaiser Neko uh, from Team Four Star. I actually was posting about this a couple of weeks ago on Twitter. Uh, and he was basically saying, like, and I, I agreed 100%, the idea of uh, Vatu and Rava being, like, the spirits of good and evil. Like, they are the physical representations of good and evil, and they're in a constant struggle. And he basically was like, that's kind of a simplistic way of looking at that. And I, I'm agreeing with him on that one. I'm like, yeah, that that is kind of where it lost me, too. Like, you're going into the spirit world, and you see all these really cool spirits and everything. That's really neat. But then you see manifestations of good and evil literally, like, like wrestling in the middle of the mountains. And it's like, uh, okay, all right, that's a little bit... It just seems like I get it. It's not really... It's not exactly a show meant for little kids, but it's... 
a show that a lot of children will watch. So, yes, they're yin and yang. Obviously, they're yin and yang. But, like, the concepts of yin and yang just, like, like literally, like, physically wrestling in the middle. Like, they're tied together in a constant struggle of, like, strength in, like, the middle of, like, I'm like, okay, that's a little... I feel like that concept could be done a lot better. Like, you want to do that. You want to do yin and yang. You want to do that. That's That's cool. That's fine. But, like... Little bit on the nose with that. Yeah, yeah, a little bit on the nose with that, okay? Best way to put that, yeah. Yeah, that's not how yin and yang <laughs> works, Cora. And it's just like, oh, okay, I all right. But the thing that really pissed me off, and it, it pissed a lot of people off, is, um, you know, yin and yang are not meant to be absolutes. Now, the one thing with that I do agree with that I liked how they handled was the idea of... Like Rava will speak to Korra, or the I think Rava was speaking to to Juan, the first Avatar, and and Rava was like, even if I defeat Vatu, Vatu will be born out of myself. For good is always born out of evil, and evil is always born out of good. No matter what, there always has to be. And I'm like, okay, okay, that I get, that I like, like the idea of good and evil can always, they can never truly be gone. They always have to come back into existence. You know? All right, that was a cool way of doing that. But it was really just a thing to get to the dark avatar shit. And it's like, okay, and then like but but everything else was very, very heavy handed with the way they handled that. And then they did the thing where they wiped out all of the former avatars, where all of the avatars were lost. And it's 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 I don't know necessarily if I should be mad about that because I've been reading a lot about that incident and it's like some interpretations are like, no, the other avatars are still there, but Korra just lost her connection with them, or they still do exist in the spirit world. They're not gone forever, but then it's kind of like, yeah, they are gone forever. And um, I, I really hate that because that was the whole idea. That was such a cool idea of like the power is passed down from one to another and one to another. And then it's like, that was the whole thing like Aang could call on all these former avatars to have, you know, talk to and like I want to talk to Kyoshi and I want to talk to Roku and Korok and Yang Chen and all these other former avatars and I was really looking forward to maybe exploring those other avatars and we do we see Wan who's the first avatar but then yeah it resulted in a in a giant kaiju battle and all of the former past lives including Aang like, if you would have kept Aang, maybe I'd be all right with it. Maybe I'd be like, all right, all the other avatars are wiped out except for Aang, so Korra could still call on Aang. But no, they're all gone, and Rava's there. So Rava basically replaces all the other avatars now instead of... It's it's very similar to, like, in an anime where you have, like, an inner self to talk to, and it's like Korra can kind of, like... She could communicate with Rava if she wants to, but all the other avatars are wiped out, so she can't call on the collected knowledge of all the other avatars. And that seems like... I saw some people saying, well, yeah, because then it would just be like Aang. And it's like, no, that's not just with Aang. That's the entire concept of the fucking Avatar. That's what they have. And you're getting rid of that maybe for storytelling reasons. Well, like, okay, things will be too easy for Korra if she can just communicate with Aang or talk to the past Avatars anytime she wants. And it's like, well, that's what all the other Avatars did. It's just, you know, I. so I guess this new Avatar who's going to be an Earthbender... Um, I, I guess he would be able to communicate with Korra, maybe, but, like, nobody else? Yeah. Yeah, Korra is definitely canon. Like, you can, you can consider what you want to be canon or not, but Korra is 100% canon. Hold on, new Avatar anime. I'm just going to type in anime. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Yeah, 2025 it's coming out. Now, when it comes to the villains in Korra, I am a firm believer the best group of villains in all of Korra. Hold on, let me show you this. Check that out. There we go. So we got we got Avatar 2025. For illustrative purposes only, this is not official. So this might not be what the guy looks like. Uh, might be a different kind of earthbender, but that's just the idea. So it's looking pretty badass. Looking pretty pretty, pretty badass so far. I'm also really interested in seeing how the world changes. That's one thing I love. I loved Korra's world building. Korra's world building was so good that they go through an industrial revolution and the world is set in like 1910s, 1920s, like New York City. I'm like, oh my God, that's so fucking cool. They have radio, they have metal bending, they have all these advancements, like, like kind of like an Attack on Titan in the last season 
where they're getting to a point where in the last uh, season of Attack on Titan, it's like human inventions and power and military strength are rivaling Titan power now. Um, and so that was kind of a big thing there. And now here we're getting to the point in Korra where it's like, okay, we're making weapons that are stronger. Like those giant like platinum robots are like can, can now deal with bending. Like human technologies beginning to catch up to magic. Like that, that I love that shit. I love that. But anyway, um, the best group of villains, the best, Zaheer is the best Avatar villain. Like, I'm sorry, Zaheer is the best. He's the best villain objectively, authoritatively. Uh, he's better than Ozai. He's better than Azula. I would probably pick Azula as number two. All of Avatar. Zaheer is the best. Come at me. I, I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I'm declaring that right now. Better than Unalak. Better than Amon. Amon was interesting. It's just the way that Amon's story ended kind of, it, it seemed a little rushed in like the last episode. Wow. Wow. Tekken speaks the truth. No, Azula's number one. I, I can see Azula and Zaheer being like, no, Azula's number one. No, Zaheer's number one. And, and you know, um, something that I did see them doing in the live action from the episodes I have seen, focusing a fuck of a lot more on Ozai, because if there's a if there's some faults with the original Avatar, which... Avatar is one of those shows that everybody really loves, and it's amazing. I love it, too. It's a great series. Um, does that mean it's perfect? No. And if you bring up anything, it's like, well, I, I, you know, this is an issue with it. It's like, no, it's not. It's perfect. It's like, no, listen. Ozai does not show up at all, I think, really, in season one. Or if he does, it's just kind of like mentioned. I, he's mentioned in season one. Season two, we get that flashback episode with Zuko. Zuko alone, so I think we see some stuff. We see the Agni Kai, so we see Ozai there. And then he finally shows up in Season 3 where he's actually plotting some things. But Ozai really doesn't... He's not at the forefront of this. It's it's not like he's focused on so much as I'm the main villain, and this is the reason I'm the main villain, and this is why I'm doing this. It's, it's Azula all day, as you say. It's Azula all day, yes. So I would say Azula is easily the best villain in the original Avatar, and Zaheer is the best in Korra. And I personally, if I had to pick between Zaheer and Azula, I would say Zaheer is better. Nope, it's perfect. I'm like, okay, all right, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's fine if you want to say it's perfect. I don't even care about Ozai. I still don't. I mean, Mark Hamill voiced him, which, you know, one of the greatest voice actors of our day. Uh, so they did they did good on that front, getting Mark Hamill to voice Ozai. But by the time Ozai showed up, it was just like, yeah, I'm the big bad evil guy, and I'm going to set the world on fire. I mean, you've known about me up until now, but here I am, and I'm doing it. And then... Uh, I was going to say Luffy, and then I was going to say Azula, and I blanked on Aang's name for a second there. And then Aang fights him. <laughs> Azula, no, Luffy, no, no, Asta, no, no, Ichigo, no, uh, Aang. And then Aang fights Ozai, and uh, he beats him. And then that's it. Yeah. Kuvira, though. Um, Kuvira... I need to go back and watch season four. I liked Z first watch through Zaheer. I've liked better than Kavira. Um, yeah, but, um, I'd have to go back and watch Kavira stuff again. Cause I don't remember hating her as a villain. I, I think I don't, I think the least favorite villain in, in Korra. I, I like, I like the least is probably Unalak. Um, that was his name, right? From season two. Because it, a lot of it tied into the whole Dark Avatar shit, and it was like, I, I didn't care for the Dark Avatar shit, as as I said earlier. So, um, you yeah. know. You know what I liked more about Season 4, though, definitely, was Korra's character, and the way they handled Korra in Season 4, where she starts out basically traumatized, like she's in a wheelchair at the end of Season 3, and then season four starts and she's out there on her own, but she's severely traumatized. She's trying to run from her problems and she's trying to like, you know, and it's not working. And one thing I loved about that character development was that Cora ends up at Toph's place. 
And Toph realizes, like, hey, you're traumatized, but you also have that poison left in your body. And so there's a whole episode where Korra is trying to learn how to bend the poison out of her body. And at the end of it, she does. And it's this very triumphant moment where she takes the poison out of her body and then Toph seals it. And it's like, well done, Korra. And you think it's like, okay, Korra has put this behind her. But it's like, dude, she's traumatized. She has some severe PTSD. Yes, removing the poison is definitely going to help her physically, but she's not just going to be able, she still has issues with this afterwards. And I love that because it's like, yeah, physically removing the poison is not just going to fix all of the trauma she suffered. She might carry that with her the rest of her life. She just has to learn how to deal with that. Okay. And um, when she goes to speak to Zaheer, even Zaheer kind of like is like, hey, let me walk you through this. Let me like, okay, just let this play out. Let this event play out. It already happened to you. Accept it and move on. You know, that is a cool fucking scene. I like that message. Yeah. Why are we talking about Korra? Because we're at the end of the stream now. I'm going to be ending it soon anyway. And so we talked about One Piece for like the first hour. And now I'm wearing a golden sequin jacket and we're talking about Korra. Yeah, Zaheer and Amon are the only ones I remember. I remember Kavira. I, just, I, I think Unalak is season two. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how they're going to do the science thing because the next big... Like, if we're going along with, like, our world, you know, if it's, like, a good... What was it between Korra and... I mean, between the original Avatar and Korra. That was, like, 60 years or so, right? Because uh, it was, like, 60 or 70 years. Hold on. They have they have timelines, actually. They have they, That's one thing I love about Korra as well. They have good timelines. Avatar Wiki, uh, Korra. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Who, uh, hold on. Who? When did the Earth Queen die? Because that was right in the middle. The Earth Queen died. Oh, that was an awesome, that was an awesome episode as well. Yeah. My cabbages. Okay. 70 years. It is 70 years. Okay. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so the Earth Queen died in 171, and then 100 years after the genocide was when uh, Avatar The Last Airbender takes place, because it's AG, after the Air Nomad genocide. So in that situation, so 70, 70, 71 years. So if we're going along, now, it might not be the same amount of time from Korra to the next Avatar series. It could actually be longer, because Aang actually died young, relatively young. Aang was like in his 60s when he died, I think. Because, um, or maybe his 50s, because Aang died because he was in the uh, the stasis, the, the iceberg, that like shortened his lifespan a bit. So Aang died in 165. He was biologically 66. So he died relatively young. There are dates? Yeah, there are. Go on the wiki. They exist. Um, okay. So... And then after one avatar dies, the other one is born, like, right after, or very shortly thereafter. So Korra would be 18, 19 years old at the end of her series, at the end of season four. By the way, by the way, I love Korra's voice actress. Like, she does an amazing job as well. Uh, Janet Varney, yeah. But anyway, Korra is 21 at the end of book four. Okay, so she's 21 at the end of book four. They're basically in, like, the 1920s, I guess, right now with their level of technology. So if we're... Well, let's just say 1920. Core is 21, provided she doesn't die super young, which they could do that. They could do a thing where Core is, like, 35, and she's, like, fighting a really strong enemy, and she gets killed, and then you know, another avatar is born and then that other avatar has to grow up and they probably don't want to do the Aang thing all over again where that this new earthbender has to learn everything. So they're probably just going to cut over all of that. So the new avatar might be like, we might not see what they're doing until they're like 20. So we have to add like another 20 so years onto that. So if Korra lives to the ripe old age of like, I don't know, 80, 90 like, we're already, we're already pushing 2010 at that point, and then another 10. Like, this could be in the future from where we're at right now, theoretically. Do you think the Earth King will be the new villain for the uh, Earth Avatar to handle as Korra? They might have a different, they might have, like, the Earth President or something. Like, they might have founded democracy or something. I, I don't know. Because 
around the time period in our world that season four takes place in like Kavira doing like the earth empire and everything like that. Like empires were really big around world war one era. And a lot of empires fell, you know, that was kind of at the period where like things were moving on, like moving away from monarchies and empires and things like that. It was getting less Imperial after that. Um, you know, there's still some monarchies that exist obviously, but like that was like a big turning point there. So, uh, yeah, we might have a very different kind of government set up in this new avatar series. It could take place uh, contemporary to us, or it could take place in the future of us, even. Or Korra could die at, like, age 35, and then this new Avatar take 20 years, so it's, like, maybe, like, 30 years from Korra, so it's, like, in the 50s, maybe, or the 60s. I don't know. Record of Ragnarok update. I haven't looked yet. I actually don't know if the new chapter's out. Probably is out. I gotta go read it. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think we're about ready to, uh, call it here. I think I'm gonna go over to the, um, let's go over to the Super Chat stream here and see what we got. Thoughts on Nana seeing her son inside Tomer? That was heart-wrenching. I think Horikoshi did a really good job of depicting, like, how Nana is reacting to basically seeing her son beating the shit out of her grandson. And so, it's, like, that, like, the look of sheer unabashed terror and, like, also the guilt she feels for that, I think was depicted beautifully do you think the earth king will be oh, i just answered that one i uh, used to do a trivia game show in this three in this three week maybe i should maybe i should do some kind of trivia show wearing the jacket yeah and then i'll do the game show in, in live at the convention but i could definitely do some kind of i have a one piece jeopardy i was going to do and it, it just never worked out because everybody i was getting ready for the jeopardy it was like every time everybody i was trying to get ready for it just it, it just the time time frame didn't work out so i should do that again i should try to bust out the jeopardy in the next three weeks um they wreck on the fact that the animals taught the OG benders instead of... Yeah, they kind of did. They kind of did, yeah. I mean, you can still kind of... That's why I hate Korra. See, that's the thing. That's an aspect of Korra I don't like. I don't just say the whole series sucks for that reason. You can if you want, obviously. But um, it's like, that's a problem with Korra. They do that retcon. To me, that's not enough to say the whole series sucks. I don't like what they did when they eliminated the Avatar, the Avatar, like the past ones. But that's not enough for me to just scrap the whole thing. There's some still some very good stuff in Korra that I enjoy. Uh, I have, may have missed this, but what happened to the Bark Urge? The Bark Urge will return. Hopefully. Do you think Blackbeard could survive being one-shot by Kaido, whatever attacks Kaido uses? Yeah, um, you know, whatever attack. If, if, if Kaido hit Blackbeard with, like, a, uh, you know, Thunder Bagra, like, right on, like, Ka like, Blackbeard would really get hurt by that. He would be in screaming and pain. Oh! But um, he would eventually get back up. He can feel pain a lot, but he can also, he has a crazy amount of endurance. He just, he feels pain really bad. Um, answer that one with Beppo. Frankie deserves kids fruit. I think I got all of these. Yeah, Luffy, uh, Nami and Usopp getting devil fruits. I don't think that's going to happen. The Straw Hats go back in time. Frankie is the giant. Chopper is a Zunisha and Nami becomes Eam. That's kind of like what happened in Seven Deadly Sins where they go back and like King... Um, they go back in time and they like take over the bodies of the, the fairy king and the giant king that lived back in that time period. Like m maybe something like that. I mean, like perhaps maybe answered that one Brooks music, which connects to the afterlife. He could send them back to hell. I, I definitely want to see Ethan and Brooke encounter each other and see how they undead. I don't think it'll be as simple as Brooke playing a jaunty tune and then Ethan just, no, and then like, it's sent back to hell. I don't think it's going to be that simple. But it would be uh, interesting to see how they play off each other. I have not seen Ninja Kamui. Love to Guild to Zoro. I'm Guild to Zoro. Yeah, cool. He was an okay movie villain. He wasn't one of the worst ones. We should do a, oh, I should do a, a video where I rank movie characters. Ooh, tier list movie characters. That wouldn't be bad. Not just the main villains because there's only like 13, 14 of those. But we should do, like, movie villains and, like, their underlings. We should do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a note of that right now. One Piece tier list movie villains. How about that? Are you guys feeling that? You guys feeling that? If you're not feeling that, we won't do it. But I need, I need content for the next four weeks. Guys, I need content for the love of God. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I have no ideas. 
No, I got I got some ideas. We'll be we'll be okay. We'll be okay. We've been we. I, I'm starting to prepare for when these droughts happen because they're about happening like once a year now. So it's like yeah. Uh, what tune antics would you like to see Luffy pull? I want to see the cuckoo clock. I want to see a cuckoo clock coming out of Luffy's head at some point. Uh, what do you expect from... Oh, I answered the Yamato one. Uh, I think uh, he's going to go and just travel around to the different temples and eventually maybe some Big Mom stuff, maybe. Uh, I answered these ones. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So what do you guys think about that idea? Uh, yeah, movie villains. Movie villains are good. Do anything. It'll be great. Ah, cool. Everyone's like, solo leveling! Like, okay, maybe solo leveling. I don't know. Best island to live on in One Piece? Ooh, that's another good one. And it's geography. Oh, I have another Lego stream. that I've been working on a Lego globe, and I want to... I, I already did, like, half of it, because this is the biggest one I've ever worked on. And I wouldn't have been able to get it done in one live stream like there was no way. So I built half of it. And I think the other half of it I could probably get done in a live stream. So I want to do that Lego stream as well. Geography tier list. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. What about my super chat? Respira. All right, well, we can check. Love your videos. Thank you. Uh, something completely silly that passed through my mind. What if Rox is the Rock Lee of One Piece? Yes. Is Poison Pink pansexual? Like, so is Reiju pansexual? I don't know. Uh, I mean, she was coming on to Tashigi, you know, so, you know, could be pan, could be bi. I'm not really sure on Reiju's sexuality. Oda's never going to reveal that type of stuff either. Like, that's not... Like, like, I'm sure Oda probably gets a lot of SBS questions, like, what's the sexuality of the Straw Hats? I'm sure people have asked him, you know, what are these characters, you know, sexuality of the Warlords or something, and I just don't think Oda's gonna answer them. Uh, longtime fan from uh, the UAE. Oh, nice. I've always wanted to ask you, since you've referenced it a few times in your videos, what's your history with the Digimon series? Um, so I watched the first four growing up. Uh, my favorite is Digimon Frontier, which I actually mentioned not too long ago in a review, I think. Um, my sexuality is Tekken 101. Um, she did what? There's a cover page where you see Reiju kind of like grabbing Tashigi's face and kind of like licking. Not licking Tashigi's face, but like her tongue is kind of like, I, I could show it to you. It's a cover page. Um, but anyway, so, um, my favorite is Digimon Frontier's. Followed by Tamers. I think it actually just goes perfect opposite. Not to say Season 1 is bad. I really have a lot of fond memories of Season 1. I just like Season 2 more than Season 1. I like Season 3 more than Season 2. And I like Season 4 more than Season 3. So that's how it goes. I love the cover pages of One Piece. So good. Like I said in the review, I, I just want there to be a massive like museum, like an Oda museum after One Piece is over of just all the artwork from One Piece. You could literally fill an entire fucking museum with this shit. Yeah, here it is. So. So it's a cover page and... Yeah, you you can see it's it's in uh it's to collaborate with uh, heroines, which is a light novel that chapters are released of this light novel in the One Piece magazine, and then it's being compiled into a proper book. And in collaboration with that, Oda drew the women of the One Piece world that show up in heroines. And uh, yeah, you see you see Reiju there, kind of kind of coming on to Tashigi. She's being a little bit, and, and you know, I actually mentioned in the video that she was maybe a little drunk on the rosé wine, but people actually brought up that can Reiju even get drunk because of her ability of poison pink? Like she can neutralize poison, so she might not even be drunk. She's just like, oh hey there, <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I would like to do a cover page tier list, but that might be a bit tricky. There's a lot of them. There's not just, like, 
30, 40 for a thing. I mean, there's a lot of cover pages. I don't even know the total number. Um, unless it says on the wiki. Someone would have to get me a total number, but like even then it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot. Oh yeah, there's oh my god, yeah, there's so many. I'd have to separate it into parts. That's what I'm that's what I'm saying, a hundred percent. There's no way. Yeah. I haven't seen X-Men 97 yet. Is it good? I I haven't seen it. I, I mean like I watched some episodes of X-Men 97. I'm the original X-Men back in the 90s. I, I remember seeing a few episodes of it. I liked it pretty good. I did do the bakery video in three parts, but that was the bakery video. It's cool. All right. It's mid. It's awesome. It's cool. It's mid. It's awesome. It's pretty good. All right, not seeing a lot of people that say it sucks, so okay. Top 10 on the first 100, another top 10 on the second. Yeah, it'd be a big-ass tier list by the end of it, though. Be a huge-ass tier list. But hey, that, that could be a project for the rest of the year, honestly. My Super Chat tip got passed. No, it didn't, because they're all saved. It's all good. The evil Dalek. All right, let's see here. Super chats you see if you missed any. Oh, you you literally sent me a super chat to remind me to read other super chats. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Thank you for the heart, evil Dalek. Exterminate. Exterminate. But uh, yeah, I think I am going to be ending it here pretty soon. We went to, uh, it was a friend of mine's uh, pa uh, friend's, okay. my best friend's wife's mother's birthday was yesterday. And we all went out to Cheesecake Factory to eat. I had never eaten there before. The food was amazing. The closest one to me is Pittsburgh, so it was like two hours away from where I live. And oh my God, that menu. Like, I could probably eat there every, like, weekend for, like, a year and probably not exhaust their whole goddamn menu. I mean, like, there's so many things in that menu. Um, yeah, this guy's been spamming through the whole chat. I'm, I'm going to time him out. Um, I'll time him out for 10 minutes because I'm going to be ending this in less than 10 minutes. If he keeps doing it next time, I'll just ban him. Um... But yeah, so um, we did that. We went to Cheesecake Factory. So I have some food left over from there and we have some cheesecake and I'm going to I'm looking forward to eating that for lunch today. Uh, very delicious. Recommended 100 percent. I never knew what Cheesecake Factory was. I I'd never been to one. So I always assumed it was just like I was thinking of like a Dairy Queen type place for some reason. Like it was a des like a like a dessert fast food. Like I knew there was also other things on the menu, but I didn't know it was like I, I was walking in. It was like this place is fucking nice. What the shit? <laughs> you know, this is a nice place. So we there. No, I tried the. Uh, I did this. Uh, Oh, what did I do? Uh, at, at, with, with places that usually have a huge menu, because there's pasta and fish and like there's like sushi cups and there's uh, next to me, the uh, lady next to me got some gumbo that looked delicious. And uh, my friend Rocky got uh, shepherd's pie and my friend Evan got orange chicken. So like just right there, it's like a New Orleans dish and like shepherd's pie is like a, a European, like English Scottish dish, I guess. And then there's a... Uh, orange chicken dish right here. And then I got these, um, this big burger that was cut into three other burgers that had like a, an on like a, like a, like a dip to it and had a really good sauce and it was so good. And then I also had, uh, this tuxedo cheesecake that was delicious. So damn good. Uh, and too big of a menu in my opinion. You can never have too big of a menu. You can never have too big of a menu ever. Like, you could just keep eating there and be like, wow, this place is really good. You could try something different every single time, and it's probably going to be delicious. All the food looked amazing. Uh, I could have probably ordered, like, like a lot of times when people order stuff at a restaurant, they'll order, like, my friend will order something, and I'll be like, eh, I probably wouldn't have liked that. It's a good thing I didn't order that. Dude, anything in here, I would be like, man, I could have ordered that gumbo or that orange chicken or that shepherd's pie. I could have ordered anything on this table that my friends got, and I would have loved it, probably. This is so good. So, yeah. I, I love Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory is good, yeah. Yeah. 
it tastes good, but it's not the best. I mean, granted, I live in a small little town. I don't really go to a lot of fancy restaurants. So this was a very low bar for me, I guess. But Cheesecake Factory blew that out of the water. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we did that. I'm going to go eat that for lunch. And uh, yeah, sit tight, guys. We got a whole month for a break of One Piece. But don't worry. I'll be making videos. A lot of other YouTubers will be making videos about One Piece. I'll be doing some tier list streams. Uh, this week, we I think we're doing back-to-back D&D this week. Because Isekai was pushed back a day. So I think we're doing Isekai Wednesday and One Piece D&D Thursday. I don't know 100%, but that's the way I have it in my calendar. Um, let's see here. And then Briggs' is D&D, which we were part of Rant Cafe D&D with Animac and Truck. That was really fun. That was a really fun uh, D&D thing. And we are going to make it a regular thing, like a bi-weekly thing from what Briggs said. Uh, I'm playing a warlock tiefling named uh, Axros or Axel. And that was a really fun campaign, a really fun just first session. Uh, never played a warlock before, and I'm going through it. I'm like, holy shit, these warlocks got so many things to do. I have been watching you for like five years now. I just wanted to ask, who do you think will win the Hunter Hunter Succession War, and who is the Dark Horse? I hope you make another anime videos. Thank you, Danny. Uh, maybe I'll make videos about Hunter Hunter, because that's always on hiatus. You can pretty much talk about that whenever. And it's all time to make a good Hunter Hunter video. Um, who would I want to be? The, who win the succession war. I like the third prince. The guy that has the coin ability. That guy I always thought was pretty cool. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to go eat. Thanks for watching. And uh, catch you back here next time. Thanks for all the super chats, everybody. One Piece will live on. Later.